Hello, I'm Adam Rickards from Control Logic here to talk to you about setting up your Bobcat switch after you get it out of the box. So today we have just a simple USB to USB-C cable, a laptop computer, and a powered Bobcat. We're going to take the cable, plug the USB into the computer, and plug the USB-C into the USB-C port on the Bobcat. Once you've connected the cable, Windows will install the driver for you and bring up a flash drive showing you the instructions of what to do next in a file called README, as well as containing drivers for Windows 7. Once the flash drive pops up, you can see a file called README. You can double click on that file and open it in Notepad. This is a text file containing the instructions for configuring the switch. For Linux-based devices, there's nothing you need to do. For Windows 7, you'll have to manually install a driver, and the storage files can be found on the flash drive. For Windows 10, you set the point the operating system to the correct driver. It comes with Windows, it's just not recognized. Here I'll go through briefly on my computer, setting up the Windows driver following the instructions in the readme file. Under other devices, we see the RNDIS as indicated. We'll select Update Driver, browse our computer, let me pick from a list of available drivers, scroll down to Network Adapters, Once again, scrolling down to the manufacturer of Microsoft, or you can select from the left-hand side and press the M key. And then ensure that you select the remote NDIS compatible device. Hit next. Say yes after reading this important message. Once completed, you should see a new entry under Network Adapters, which is your connection between your computer and the Bobcat. You can find in the README file that the device has a static IP address always assigned in factory to every single Bobcat unit. This means every time you try to access a device for configuration using the out-of-band management port on the USB-C interface, the Bobcat will always be available at the same IP address. Because the USB Ethernet interface we just set up has DHCP enabled by default, you should automatically be assigned an IP address by the Bobcat, which allows you to access the switch Once you have completed the configuration and you have the IP address, you can navigate to your web browser, type in the IP address, and it should take you directly to the Bobcat. If you're using a modern web browser, it might warn you that there's a security connection that's not private. This is because the Bobcat comes with a preloaded self-signed certificate, which is not considered valid by web browsers. Of course, for this device, it's safe to proceed at this point. The default username and password on the device currently on this firmware is admin and private. If you're actually running the firmware 8.1 or higher, it will prompt you at this stage to create a new password and it will delete the default password. This has been done for security reasons to ensure the device is not put into the field with default credentials. Once you've logged in, you'll be presented with the web interface to the Bobcat switch. It should be fairly familiar to anyone who's used Hirschman before. The coloration might not be as uh, detailed as it was in the Java interface, but otherwise the menu structure should be the same. One of the main benefits I've found when using the web interface is the search function available in the top left, allowing you to quickly and easily navigate the menu structure to find exactly what you're trying to do. 
For example, if I want to configure rapid spanning tree, I could type in RSTP or spanning, it would pick up the wording from that page and immediately take us to the relevant portion of the switch. This means configuring the switch out of the box is incredibly quick and easy. You may have noticed when we started connecting to the device, there's a red light on the front indicating that there's some sort of hardware fault. Now that we have access to the interface, we can determine what that fault is and look to resolve it. The first page you're presented with, the device status page, has a device status with an alarm counter here. And we can quickly and easily see by mousing over the information section that there's a power supply two issue on the device. If we look at the wiring on the front of the device, you can see that only power supply one is currently wired. This may be the case on site, and it could be that you want to ignore the status of the second power supply to clear the fault line. We're going to quickly search for device status using the search menu, which will take us directly to the correct page to get rid of this fault line. You can see here on the configuration of device status, it's currently in error, and we're monitoring the temperature, power supply one, and power supply two. I'm going to quickly uncheck power supply 2, hit the right button to commit the change to the switch, and hopefully if we refresh this page here, you can see the device status has gone from error to OK, and if we look back at our device, you can see the status is now green. One thing you may have noticed if you're paying attention in the top left here, is now there's a flashing disk icon. If we mouse over there, you can see it currently says that the non-volatile memory is not synchronized for the running configuration. This means that if the device was to be powered off and powered back on again, we would lose our change. We clear our search and then click on the disk. It'll take us to the load save screen. And by pressing the save icon down the bottom, you can see the operation starts and this will push the configuration into persistent memory, non-volatile memory, so that the device now will save our changes even if it's rebooted. This was just a short introductory video into how to access your Bobcat after you've got it out of the box. We'll do more videos in the future covering how to configure some of the basic functionality. And as easy as that, you now got online to your Bobcat switch and are able to program it for your customer's application. If you have any technical inquiries, we have a team of people at Control Logic happy to help.